Hey, Dave Lacalle with Head Games Motorworks, and today we're going to talk about one of my favorite subjects on the planet, and that is the 1JZ. Keep watching. I've never made it any secret that I am not a big fan of the 1JZ. And that is because I think there's better options for you if you're going to spend the money and you want to make more power. You're kind of limited on what you can do with the 1J. Now, we have some guys recently that don't care what I think. And they say, Dave, I really want you to work on the cylinder heads, which we're going to do. And today we're going to do a pocket port R. Now, we're not going to get into the port. I'm going to show you. We're going to port the area underneath the valve seat. We're going to do a short side radius. And we're going to do the combustion chamber. But... We're going to go over some 1JZ VVTI and non-VVTI combustion chamber differences. And then we are going to dart grind it. So keep watching. Let's go over some of the differences. Now, this is the VVTI head. And the VVTI head has this combustion chamber that's kind of closed in. Uh, it's very tight to the valve, which means it shrouds the valve. And this is the non-VVTI head. The VV non-VVTI head has a much more open combustion chamber. I did not CC these things. Do you not know the difference? Don't ask me. I think we did actually CC it at one time, but I don't know enough about them. I should maybe for the video, but uh, this is what you guys are going to get. And you guys can Google this stuff because, or ChatGPT, because they know everything. So what you have here is a combustion chamber from the VVTI. What we're going to do is I'm going to scribe the combustion chamber out with the gasket, but I'm not going to actually take it out to the gasket. I am going to make it this size. We're going to digitize all this stuff, so that way we can start offering this service. It's called our pocket port R. And then also, we're going to port the area underneath the valve, which is the bowl area here. We're going to port the area under here. We're going to open it up in relation to the size of the valve. The short side radius is going to get done. And eventually guides and valve job are going to go into this, but that is not for today. Today, we are just going to do the pocket port. We're going to do the combustion chamber. Oh, and we're going to show you some differences on the 1JZ to go on the 2JZ. So the first thing I'm going to do is use a marker. You can use a marker. You'll need metal die to do this. I mean, it does hurt, but it also doesn't really help. So you're doing this because we need a canvas. You know, sometimes when you make lines, you want to make sure that you do it correctly. I did more than I needed to because I'm only going to do one because we're going to digitize it. I'm going to do this one right here. But I just wanted to show you what you're going to do here. And then you put the gasket on it. And this is the 1JZ gasket. And now you can see how much overhang there really is. So this is the black part right here. Let me scribe it out so you can really see it. Some guys are going to use your dowel pins. Other guys are going to use your hands. Uh, I've been doing it for 30 years. I prefer my fingers. I used to use dowels. And uh, then it was a pain in the ass to get the gasket off. So here you can see the difference. Because this area here, all this black here, is, to the, is, is sitting in your combustion chamber. And this is a potential hot spot, this side too. And what happens here is that this much quench can cause detonation. It can make it very sensitive to timing. And that is basically the end goal of this is to make this thing less timing sensitive so you can run more timing and you can run less boost and brings down the EGTs. That is the name of the game here. And that's what we call it the pocket port R. It's made for guys who want to make some jam. It's not made for 400 horsepower. It's made for, because at 400, this doesn't really matter, but at 800, this absolutely makes a difference. So measuring the non-VVTI versus this head, the combustion chamber is really small on this one. So it's 79.3 millimeters, 3120. And the other combustion chamber is 3350. So 3350 and 3100, you can tell that there's a huge, huge difference here. And that's what we're going to make. So we're going to make this chamber the same size. We're going to make this 3350. So we have to take quite a bit off, uh, but that's no problem. So we got chamber valves in here. We take the 45 degree angle and we make it razor sharp. And that way 
it sits flush with the valve seat and you see I have tape under here. That's because I needed some height. I, I'm not using the OEM valve. I'm just using valves I have laying around and I needed the height. So that way that these were both the same. And I did that over here. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this back too. Now you're going to see me do this. If you're a novice, what I suggest is that you get yourself some tools. Get yourself, this is not the tool I would use, but, um, well, it's not the size I would use, but it is the tool I would use. And you can do radiuses and you can scribe out however you're gonna do it. Now I'm gonna do it by eye because, well, I'm gifted like that. And I've been doing this for 30 years, so I can see shapes. Uh, but if you are new to this, this is exactly how I started. I started using these in order to get my shapes to understand them, scribe them out, and nail them every time. You have the Makita GD0603 grinder with the Head Games Super Spiral three quarter burr. It's a bad dude. This is the burr that you need. And you need this burr because it's so big that I'm gonna be able to keep the shape. Cause this is round, I gotta make something round that's square. And I don't wanna use a little burr. If I use a little burr, then I have to do a lot of shaping. I don't wanna do a lot of shaping. I wanna kind of rough this thing in with this, go back here with the half inch, and then maybe hit it again with the three eighths, just to make sure that it's sandable and I'm gonna be good to go. And then you're gonna watch me go over it with my Clico grinder. I'm gonna hit it with a cartridge roll. I'm gonna hit it with a 60 grit just to make it nice and smooth. And then I'm gonna hit it with the corners with a sanding disc and uh, that's it. So enjoy the music and watch the show. The chamber is done. See here, everything's blended. Uh, I made this a slight radius and I made this flat. I made all this, I blended it all in and I made this into a circle again. I tried not to take anything out of the corners because really there was no room to take anything out of the corners. And uh, now this thing is ready for digitizing, but first, we gotta do the pocket port. So we're gonna port this area here. We're gonna port the area underneath the valve seat, short side radius. We're gonna make this in relation to the size of the valve. So it's a percentage of the size of the valve. That's what we're gonna do here. 
And we're going to measure it first. And after that, we're going to size it, shape it, and just keep watching. Now we're onto the pocket port. And the pocket ports are tricky because you really need to make them the right size. What is the right size? Well, that is an objective thing. This is not a head games thing. This is, um, you know, anytime you buy into something, you're buying into somebody's idea. Now, I also play with this. Some heads like a different throat diameter than others, and I don't know the 1JZ that well. So I'm going to practice on this head. And what we got here, I take this little caliper here, I go inside and I measure the ID of that. And what we do is we take the size of the valve, figure out a percentage, and you want to be close to say 89, 88%. Now this thing right here, right from factory is at 86 and percent. So we have some room and we're going to do that right now. I'm going to be using the head games half inch super spiral burr and uh, I'm going to use a high speed and then I'm going to go back over it with the head games three eighths double cut burr. Same burr, same style burr. I'm going to do this burr. So now we're at the exhaust short turn and short turns are they're very very tricky because you have to keep the turn part of it you have to keep the uh the radius to it or you're gonna you're gonna really hurt it uh there is more here than there is and and in the bowl than the whole rest of the cylinder head and if you mess this up you're not getting it back and it's not so much about size it's definitely about shape you want to make sure you shape it right. If you shape it right, it will treat you very, very well. Now the OEM is not so bad. If we're going to talk about a lot of OEM short turns, this thing is actually not so bad. I am going to lay this part right here back a little bit and I'm going to blend it into the top of here, but I'm not going to just lay this whole thing back. I'm going to start from here. I'm going to start in the corners. I'm going to widen it and then I'm going to blend it into the seat. It's also really important that you finger it. Use your fingers. Your fingers can tell you a lot about what's going on there and it feels good. So I'm gonna blend this in with the 3 8 and start on the intake. All right, now, they're all ground, they're all fine grinded. I think I'm gonna have to sand three of them because three ports are different than the other three ports. Now all six ports are the same. You also notice this area right here uh, that's not touched. And that is for good reason. You do not need to make this part and this part the same size. Like you don't need to dig this out. If you dig this out, you'll absolutely make it too big you don't want to do that. And the reality is that it would hurt you more than help you to remove it. So now let's start on the intake. Now on the intake side, it's not as small as the exhaust. And what I mean by that is that we are already at 87% of the size of the valve right from the get go. And that means that this area right here, so there's like a little dip, you're probably not even going to be touching it. I mean, you might touch it, but it's, it, you're not making this part right here any bigger, 
we're going to do the walls, we're going to do the short side, and that is where all of it's going to come from. And I would expect to see less of a gain on the intake side than the exhaust. The exhaust is really going to pick up the intake, eh, not so much, but it will pick up for sure. But let's see what the gains are once we finish this all up. Short turn on the intake side, horrendous. This is what I was talking about. You see like there's this piece right here and you see this line right here. So this gives you the size, but it definitely lacks in shape. So once we widen this right here in the corners and we shape this all in, this is where all of your gains are on the intake side of a 1JZ. This combined with a killer valve job is what all the gains are right here. All right, this thing is ready. Ready for, ready for guides, ready for valve job, ready for digitizing, really. Uh, so we also have to flow it. There's a lot that has to be going on here, but uh, you can look at the combustion chamber. The combustion chamber is all blended in. It blends right into the top cut of the valve job. And you saw me mention, I mentioned these little areas right here before, and you'll see it also on the intake side see how like this area right here is not ported guys you're doing this at home don't think that this area right here has to be ground because if you grind this area right here you're going to change the whole shape of this and you're going to make this area too big and you make it too big you lose airflow you don't pick it up and it's a dip there's a really big dip here so as long as you're keeping this shape this will be consistent and it is throughout the rest of the ports I'm not gonna, I, this thing's on a tripod right now, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take it off to show you, but I can say that they're all pretty much the same and this area right here is not cut. If it's like that, that's fine. If some heads won't be like this, some heads you'll be able to port it and this area will get touched or some of them will, but you just gotta keep an eye on that. And uh, so now this thing is all, the short turns are done. It's all ported. I'm gonna sand this for doing the digitizing portion of it. Digitizing does not like to have it ground, but other than that, this thing is ready to rock and roll. I'm not gonna show the process today, but I want to just touch on this oil hole right here. So this oil hole feeds the cylinder head, the top of the cylinder head with oil. And this customer brought up how guys do a swap. So this is a 2JZ head gasket, and this is the oil hole right here. And the oil hole doesn't match this oil hole. So basically we have to move this oil hole this way. We have to move it down or make this a better path. And that's gonna be for the next video. We're gonna show how we do it. And um, now we're not gonna perfect it just yet. I think we're gonna put this on a, this is a practice head, we're gonna do that. And um, so we're gonna figure that out. But that, that's a very big deal. We had to get some tooling and we're gonna put it on the bridge port. We're gonna figure out how to make this hole fit the 2JZ gasket so there is no oil issues. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for us today because we still need to put guides. We need to, well, we need to digitize this thing. We're gonna put guides in it, valve job it, and then it goes on the flow bench and we're gonna document our gains so be sure to like, subscribe, comment below. I'd love to hear from you. Toodles.